If you've never played Dungeons & Dragons, you must have seen it in Stranger Things, so you should have an idea of how exciting this game is. This magical role-playing game has been brought to life in a movie called Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. From mind flaying monsters to epic battles, this movie has it all. Today, we'll dive into the behind-the-scenes wizardry that brought the film to reality, unraveling the secrets of practical effects and cutting-edge technology that helped to breathe life into this fantasy film. Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves kicked off its movie magic in Iceland and Northern Ireland, and filming started back in April of 2021. The creative minds behind it, inspired by director Chris McKay and writer Michael Gillio's earlier attempt, set out to make a true fantasy epic. The movie was released back in March of 2023 by Paramount Pictures, and while critics gave it a thumbs up for its awesome story, the cash register didn't ring as loud. The movie only made a bit over $208 million worldwide, falling short of breaking even. The directors enlisted the expertise of Legacy Effects, an acclaimed FX studio with an impressive resume. They've been nominated for Academy Awards and adorned with Emmys. Legacy Effects worked its magic not only on this film, but also on other blockbuster hits like The Mandalorian, Avatar The Way of Water, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and The Avengers films. Meanwhile, the visual effects were handled by Industrial Light and Magic. The Dungeons & Dragons movie is packed with real-life magic thanks to lots of practical effects. Instead of just using computers, the production team used tangible things like puppets, animatronics, and real sets. The film is filled with creatures that aren't all computer-made. Some are actually puppets or models brought to life on the set. Now this mix of real and digital magic makes the movie feel more alive and exciting. So there's a scene where the movie characters are riding across an open plain and a massive volcano erupts in the background. You would think that's all CGI, but surprisingly, it's not a digital effect. It's the real deal. Iceland's Fagrasfjall volcano, caught on camera during its six month eruption in March of 2021, became an unexpected backdrop for the movie. The production team was lucky to be there at the right time and captured the eruptions to be used just for the movie. All the characters in the movie, with their costumes and prosthetics, are a great achievement for the production team. In the early scenes, we get to see a new prisoner at the Ravel's End prison called Gorg. The creative minds at Legacy FX, specifically artists Glenn Hans and Scott Patton, undertook the prosthetic design for the formidable Gorg character, having hands, feet, and facial prosthetics, and crafted it using foam latex appliance for the makeup, instead of silicone, because of better durability in fighting sequences. Gorg's initial design was done digitally, and then it was adapted to the life cast actor, Spencer Wilding. Later on, when the characters Edgin and Olga are seeking parole, they face off against three characters, including the Dragonborn Chancellor, Norixius. The legacy artist, Scott Patton, pioneered a digital sculptor of the dragon-like head, employing cutting-edge techniques. The process involved creating a mold from the digital sculpt, followed by a clay pole to refine sculptural details. Now, I should mention that Brian Larkin delivered a stellar performance as Norixius, but the magic, it didn't stop there. Legacy Effects mechanical FX designer David Coverrubius ingeniously devised a facial recognition program syncing with his own movements. This technology, in turn, animated Norixius's animatronic face in real time, responding to Brian Larkin's voice cues. Legacy Effects co-founder Shane Mahan described the collaborative process, emphasizing the precision of timing and live adjustments to really capture that performance. Facial animation Let's be honest, it has come a long way, and in the Dungeons & Dragons movie, they used a cool technology called the face wear system. Unlike older methods, this system is markerless, meaning no dots on the face. Instead, it uses a camera to watch an actor's face and capture all of the movements. The actor's expression gets instantly transferred to a character on the screen. It's super handy for characters like the Dragonborn, who need lots of facial animations to look real. So with face wear, making characters in the movie express emotions became way more advanced and lifelike, adding that sprinkle of extra magic to the film. Another great character is Jonathan, 
a large blackbird character with black feathers. The mechanical team skillfully constructed a framework beneath the costume, incorporating gears to control those intricate wings. Actor Clayton Grover, portraying Chancellor Jonathan, faced long, grueling filming days of up to 14 hours. But to give him relief from all the weight of the costume, they used a wire ring that allowed him to rest between takes, and a hook coming down from the ceiling really took the weight off of his shoulders. A memorable scene features a giant fish caught in a net by the villagers, brought to life through a colossal puppet crafted by legacy effects. The practical effects served as the tangible foundation while industrial light and magic infused the digital enhancements, animating articulated eyeballs to make them really look alive. ILM's compositors manipulated the character's jawline lips and added water effects by sheeting water glimmering off the creature along with splashes and droplets. But the owlbear was actually the most popular creature among the VFX crew. Even though people loved it, making this creature that's part owl and part bear requires really careful work. They had to figure out how to mix the movements of an owl and a bear in just the right way. They put owl-like head movements on top of the bear's motions to make it look natural. They also paid special attention to the beak and face, making sure they looked like a perfect mix of both creatures. This combination of using real things and digital effects showed how much effort really went into creating creatures just for this movie. Now let's see what cameras were used to film the movie. Dungeons and Dragons employed a sophisticated blend of cinematography captured through top tier cameras. The filmmaking team, while not originally targeting IMAX, utilized cutting edge equipment including the Ari Alexa LF and the Ari Alexa Mini LF, along with Panavision T-Series lenses. These cameras, embraced under the Filmed in IMAX program, contributed to the movie's visually stunning narrative. Despite not being specifically tailored for IMAX, the result is a captivating 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio throughout the entire film, seamlessly integrating the magical landscapes and characters into a cinematic spectacle. One of the defining scenes of the movie is where Doric is caught spying by Daisy Head's Red Wizard Sofino, and it sparks a thrilling and visually amazing chase scene. Fun fact, this scene is actually the one that Goldstein and Daly pitched at their very first meeting with Paramount for this movie. Filming such a long, seemingly one-take shot takes so much work and the team knew it would be difficult to pull off. They had to fuse multiple sets and outdoor locations together seamlessly and used as many practical effects and environments as they could. In this almost three minute long chase sequence, the camera follows Doric in an incredible, seemingly non-stop take as she shapeshifts into different creatures, making her escape a wild adventure. The chase kicks off in the vault room set with a computer made fly. The team cut a hole in the set wall to pull the camera through, leading the digital fly into a computer animated scene. Sets were all crafted with removable floors for Doric's mouse escapades, allowing stunning low angle shots. While most animals were computer made, the cat that strolls out of the chimney was actually real. The family that we see in this particular scene when the cat jumps out of the chimney is actually shot against a blue screen in LA, and then they merge it together with the sequence. Overall, people really liked the movie. On Rotten Tomatoes, 91% of critics gave it a thumbs up, with an average score of 7.4 out of 10. Even though the fans loved it, the movie didn't make as much money as they hoped at the box office. So although the big bosses at Paramount Pictures mentioned they might still make a sequel somewhere in the future, it would more likely be done with a smaller budget. So did you watch the movie? What was your favorite part of it? Tell us down in the comments. Also check out our channel for more amazing movie tech videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more interesting Galore Tags videos. Thanks for watching.